So there's the free kick initially that didn't go the way, or the touched that didn't go the way. And well, can you, if that wind that moves yeah. his hair, then then you be no one, no umpire is picking that. You up. can't expect an umpire to pay that. But the problem no. was they then, after the goal had been kicked, they protested far too vocally and in the wrong manner. Actually, just look, look at the right the arm. There, yeah, just, look at the right looks bicep. The arm, does it? Top, top part of the bicep. The bicep. But you know, you either pick Again, them up or you don't. Pick up. Yes. Yeah. I think the ball might have been touched a couple of times on the way through uh, by the shoulder and then by the hair. It's a little flat from James. The hair Ace. counts. The hair, the hair, the hair wouldn't the hair count, though, does it? Would it? it We're does. not sure. No. I think there was a bit of descent went on after that for the second free kick, but very rarely you see that. So Carlton's last five wins before today were by less than a goal. Goal, yeah. Five wins in a row by less than a goal. So that one looked like it was going to be the same, but for the uh, the free kick behind the play, which. Yeah, Freo, very disciplined. You'd, if you're a Freo supporter, oh, and Kath's been really quiet here. <laughs> if you're a Freo supporter, you're enormously proud of that group. They they dominated stoppages. They came with a plan around going slow with their offence to stop Carlton being able to bounce off it. And they they all but got the job done. Carlton kicked five, doubled their goal scoring in the last, last quarter, quarter, kicked five goals in the last quarter. And Kerno uh, lit up a little bit in that last little bit as well. Yeah, but, and there was no really standout for Carlton. All the mids, Cripps only had 20. Uh, Saad had 25 with the most. So they're, they're coming together, the Blues. That's four on a trot now. So they got Adelaide next week at Marvel on Saturday afternoon at 4 p.m. So it should be a good game. And what a great, what a great feel. Yeah. Like, so th- th- these are two clubs playing away from their home venue and a great feel oh, in this uh, stadium. We've needed it, haven't we? Yeah. Because it's been a, a bit of a... Disappointing uh, yeah. start to gather round with a couple of the earlier games, but this has seriously brought Adelaide Oval to life. What about Charlie Kerner and some of those moments in the final term? Well, young Joshua Draper was assigned the role. Yeah. I mean, Alex Pierce was on Mackay, and then when Mackay was either off or in the ruck, then then he'd go across to Kerno. But yeah, Kerno v Draper in the last couple of uh, plays, that was what happened. Well, let's have a look at exactly what occurred in the closing moments of the game. It was that noisy here at the Adelaide Oval. So there's Cottrell's goal. So that's to put the Blues in front. So we believe it was for descent. Already. Descent. Wasn't he against Josh Tracy, was it? Big Trace runs away. So whether... We just need to keep an eye on what happened at the top of frame. We might try and have a look at that again, it whether must, it was set around James Ace or not. It must have been a bit of a draw. It looks like Jordan Clark. The umpire's yeah. pointed Jordan Clark, and Kennedy was the closest one. It, it must have been a bit of a drive-by. He's, he's running past the umpire and give him a few choice words, and that's what he's picked up on. And Let's see it one more time. Yeah, right here. Yeah, he looks, he looks, straight, looks straight towards him. That's it there right there, and there's the call. What about that game earlier here today at Adelaide Oval? That was a thriller. It was crazy, Jonesy. A, a frantic finish and so many different storylines coming out of it. So here's what happened in the dying seconds. George Hewitt, there's a snap. It brushes, it looks to brush James Ace on the shoulder. Umpires don't pick that up. Matt Cottrell marks it. There's some significant uh, ramifications, some significant blowback from the players towards the umpire. Matt Cottrell takes that kick, kicks the goal. Now, a free kick for descent. It is awarded where the football is at the time or whatever is the greater penalty for the offending team. So for Fremantle, taking the free kick right where the descent was, that's why there's another kick there and it is a goal and Carlton get what is ultimately a game-winning uh, lead to finish off at Adelaide Oval. So. Here's the umpire audio of the moment, followed by Fremantle coach Justin Longmuir post-match. Free kick in the middle. Free kick here, Carlton. Free kick here, Carlton. The set. Free kick there. Yeah, oh, over grab, a free grab, kick to Carlton. Grab Kennedy. Use. He's there. closest. No, grab Kennedy. Kennedy, it's a free Kennedy. kick. Against you. Hold the ball. Hold the ball to the chine. Hold the ball to the chine. Those players clearly thought they touched the footy. (laughs) I mean, they still say that now, but I mean, that's a really hard call for the umpire to make without going to a replay. So we don't want to do that for every decision. So we just need to move on. Well, uh, my crack, we're going to go with the controversy of the weekend, of course, was the Fremantle-Carlton finish and that decision that was touched that wasn't paid by the umpire. And 
it, it made me think again, and I went with this three years ago, about why are we, why are we not seriously considering as an industry having some form of mechanism to challenge an umpiring decision? And before everyone sits at home and gets up in arms, you can see there the clear deflection. And that's why all the players knew. It was actually, it wasn't just brushing his hair. That was a, a pretty big deflection uh, around the ball in that situation. Why we don't seriously consider some form of mechanism to review an umpiring decision when nearly every other major sport around the world has that form. So you think about rugby union, rugby league, cricket, soccer, basketball, NFL, they all have a, a mechanism where they can review a decision from the umpire or the referee and challenge it. Yet we all, we're very quick to just dismiss it in, in the AFL and say, well, we can't have that here. We've just got to wait for the letter on Monday for the AFL to say, sorry, we got it wrong. And I don't think it's time we seriously have a chat. We've got the technology to, to look at most of these incidences. We've got, we've got the opportunity to be able to do it. And I think we seriously need to have a conversation. If we want to have a conversation about whether we need a red card in football, why, why are we being left behind and having games decided? So how does by it work? Our... How would it work? Well, there's got to be a, a lot of thought into it. But you can easily... It has to be off a, a decision. So it has to be a free kick or a mark. You can't, I don't think, in our game, uh, challenge a non-call because the game will continue to play Storms on. Storms non-call. Well, if the umpire lets it play on, you okay. can't say, oh, I think I was taken high, because the game continues to okay. flow. But if a free kick or a mark is paid, and you don't believe it's it's correct, I think, and maybe you just do it for, to start off with in fourth quarters, or we have it, you know, the, in the 20-minute mark of a, of a game, to be able to get these decisions right, because I know people are going to say, we don't want more reviews and these sorts of things. Well, we're already prepared to wait for one minute while the umpire goes to the score review for whether a point is scored or whether it trickles out of bounds in the first 15 minutes of the game. We're allowed to have the boundary umpires have a conference with the field umpire for 30 seconds whose shin it came off when it went out on the full. So we do that anyway, yet the most critical element of the game, the umpire's decision, particularly in a game that can decide the outcome, there's no mechanism to review the decision. I just think we need to seriously have it, just have a discussion about it, raise it, and see if we can get to it. Because at some point we will. Like every other sport, we should be able to do it. And I love the fact that you brought it up because I think on the weekend we would have had a record amount of reviews throughout games. But you only do... Well, I'd only have one no, review. No, no, but I'm just saying, saying it's we're... one review, so that's it. But that's what I mean. If we're prepared to do so many reviews... Of... Oh, all the other reviews all you mean. Oh, reviews. yeah, at the moment it's out of control. And then you have one captain's call, whether yeah. it's an out-of-bounds, you, you get one. Yeah. I love the idea. So why do the, why do the goal umpires get to have 15 reviews per game, but we can't have the captains or the players on the field have one review for a critical decision? Correct. And, Joey, take us through the final play, because people at home sitting there... and cost the game of footy. Because uh, dissent was obviously yeah, the back we've, end of we've all seen we've all seen the final play and the deflection off James Ash, but this was just interesting that caught my eye that hasn't really been raised. So there'd been two or three stoppages in a row. De Koning had gone up against Jackson, but here Paddy Cripps decides to go. I'm going to go up in the ruck, and he calls out De Koning. And at this moment, this threw Luke Jackson. So there's been some negativity around Luke Jackson's hit, even from his own coach, that he slapped it forward. It needed to go backwards. But he wasn't aware that it was going to be Cripps going up in the ruck. He just presumed it was De Koning, who he'd gone up against most of the day. De Koning was right near him. And by him backing out, it just threw Jackson off a little bit. It was just something chaotic. I don't necessarily think it was you know, um, anything groundbreaking, but just a, a subtle change up by the skipper to take it upon himself and say, hey, give me a crack in the ruck. It was and an awful hit, wasn't it? Awful. It was a bad hit. But I, th I think that wasn't deliberate. I think he just got, in the moment... Rattled. Rattled that all of a sudden Cripps is the one in the ruck standing under him. And, you know, these things can happen and... Um, full credit to the Blues, and they've done it again. They've won another close game, and it's becoming a real habit for them. And you did bring this up three years ago, Joey, uh, about the captain's call. And, so. and no one it was sort of scoffed at, but I think we just need to seriously consider it.